I serve the risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, my Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow Yes, good morning. That is, the, that is the ultimate proof of the resurrection, the transformed life. You know, when we trust in the Savior, He comes in to live within us through His Holy Spirit. And I tell you what, it's in my heart today to be here, and I trust it's in yours, and good to see you. If you were here early, not so early this, uh, this year, but we had a sunrise service right out here on the front lawn, and that is a highlight in our church year what a wonderful thing it is to gather out there on the outside and uh, the rain but there was no rain and it was just great if you were able to make it for that and then we had our we had our uh, easter breakfast and let me just say wasn't that wonderful yes 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 when the menu includes bacon and cream gravy and all of that. God bless you. Our Sunday school, and here we are to worship. You may be seated. So good, good, good to see you. Our, um, our, our service today is a musical, Arise My Love. And so we'll minister today both in song, largely in song, and in spoken word. So I trust that it will uh, it really inspire you and communicate to you the message we all know and love the gospel of Jesus Christ and so we're so glad that you're a part of our service today thank you for coming we have family members that are here and God bless you and everyone's dressed up in their Easter finest right and so you look you look marvelous you just look beautiful let me just say that well um, have you heard about the chocolate whopper April Fool's Easter Sunday, April Fool. Well, Satan was fooled. Jesus is alive. Uh, I guess that's what we'll say about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I trust you haven't been the, the brunt of some April Fool's jokes. But the day is young. So you have time. 
you have time. Just a few things. Uh, Brother Bill McCain, who we know and love, and uh, Mackie has preceded him to heaven. And he's in a hospice situation, and he's not doing well. Uh, Darla and Alan, the children are here, and we met with him the, earlier this week. So would you just keep him in your prayers? Also, David Pinkerton's dad, uh, James Allen Pinkerton, who we have met and known and loved so, so much. Uh, he, he went home to be with the Lord. I just wanted you to know that his uh, services will be this week, uh, viewing tomorrow night at, at uh, Restland, this station from 6 to 8, and the memorial service will be um, 11 o'clock there at Restland on Tuesday morning. So uh, those members of our church know and love, pray for the Pinkerton family and, uh, and pray for that service. Uh, Mary Salvador's brother also, I've under, I understand, is not well and not back, not doing well. Had a heart attack and then a stroke, and so we would want you to remember him in prayer as well. And, of course, lest you forget uh, the Pinkerton family, I tell you, look at this. They've got a memorial service for Brother James the top end, and then Alex and Monica uh, are getting married Saturday. And all of that in one week, and uh, wow, we're excited about that. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon this Saturday, Alex and Monica. And so uh, we share in their joy, right? Absolutely, I share in their joy. And uh, it's going to be a great week. Uh, thank you for your prayers for uh, Larry Jones Memorial Service. And many of you, we had a lot of our members go, go all the way down to Houston. Uh, Lord bless you for that. Don't forget Carol and, and uh, Nate and Betsy and their families in that time of need and, and bereavement. Yes, we weep for our dead, but not like others who have no hope. We have hope, and uh, that's what today is all about. We'll ask our ushers to stand as we receive our offering, and as this offering is received, we will begin our musical this morning. Thank you for being here. Father in heaven, we love you. We praise you for loving us first, most, dear Father. Even in our sin, you have pursued us through your Holy Spirit and through the message of the gospel. Christ is risen. He's risen in us. And we praise you as our Lord, our living King and Savior for the hope that lives in us. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today and celebrate the joy of the good news of the gospel. And we pray for those who are with us today, perhaps who have not from their hearts embraced the truth of the gospel. I pray that your Holy Spirit would draw them to faith today. Lord, what a wonderful day would be to know you and have the living Savior inside, inside the heart as a reality. I pray that today that would happen. Bless this offering as we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good news that saves those who firmly believe it. Wonderful news that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised from the dead on the third day. These things were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Father, thank you for the beautiful message of the resurrection. Where would we be today without it? We'd be the most hopeless of creatures. We're separated from you by our own rebellion. But nothing.
could keep you from reaching out, from coming down to earth, from taking on flesh, from carrying our sin to the cross.
Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. God's people knew it well. Throughout their history, sacrifices had been made to remind them of the cost, the high cost of sin and disobedience. And when Jesus came, his purpose from the beginning was to give his life, to shed his blood. In our place. On the night before Jesus' crucifixion, Matthew says he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The plan, the scripture says, had been in place since the foundation of the world unfolded step by step. On the cross, he became God's perfect sinless lamb. With his own blood, he paid the price for our sin to redeem each of us.
At least three times the word tells us how Jesus told his closest followers he would be delivered to the religious leaders of the day, how he would be condemned to death, how he would be handed over to the Romans, how he would be mocked and then beaten and then killed. Yet, always with the prediction of his death, he told them that he would rise again on the third day. Now the crucifixion was over. The Savior's body had been buried. His heartbroken followers were in hiding. The Roman guard had been posted at the tomb. Everything looked hopeless. It was time for the third day to dawn. At the tomb that day Just shuffling soldiers' feet As they guarded the grave One day, two days Three days had passed Could it be that Jesus Had breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sin. All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Then the father looked down to his son and said, Oh 
Oh, great Savior, we would be forever separated from God without the cross. We would be destined for eternal death without the empty tomb. What an incredible gift you have given to us. Could Britain leave a trail of galaxies and dream of me? What kind of love is writing my story till the Mercy's pain on you. What kind of king would choose to wear a crown of leaves and scars to win my heart? What kind of love tells me I'm the real? And he can't stay inside the grave. You is it you standing here before my eyes? Every Love is 
Aren't you thankful today for a God who loves, the one who's willing to empty himself of his glory, to humble himself, become obedient, even to death on the cross? And the amazing thing is he did it all for us, so unworthy, so rebellious, so full of deceit and doubt and shame. Even today, his grace pursues us and his mercy calls to us. Like the father of the prodigal son, he longs for us to come home.
There are plenty of times when life is hard, even for believers. Trouble, heartache, they're a part of life, part of living. And Jesus didn't promise that this world would be free of pain. In fact, he said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And he promised, my father's house has many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This world is not
message to you this morning in song and in scripture is that some 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ entered our world as the sinless, virgin-born Son of God. He lived a perfect life, fulfilling all the prophecies of the Old Testament. And not only that, he met the demands of the law that condemn us, even to this day. Who among us hasn't lied? Who among us hasn't taken things that don't belong to us? Who among us have entertained a thought that was not what it ought to be? Jesus died an atoning death on the cross for man's sins. But that's not all. Praise God, he rose from the grave on the third day. And in that, he verified, he proved that he was who he said he was. That he would do the very thing that he said he would do. And the greatest news of all is that he's alive today. And I'm not talking about an historical figure, a personality to be remembered only by history. Jesus isn't someone who only comes to life as people read and hear about his teachings. No. I mean, Jesus is personally alive and is active right now. Presently, <laughs> he's not on the cross. Amen. <laughs> the tomb, it's empty. No, no, no. He's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And he's serving as our soul-seeking redeemer, reigning king. Oh, and a faithful, a faithful high priest interceding for us. By the Holy Spirit, Jesus is moving in this world. Right now he's moving. He's moving through his living word. He's moving through his churches. And he's moving through individual believers. Their hearts and their lives speak his truth. And right now, I believe that Jesus is present in this sanctuary seeking those individuals who are yet to make up their minds and hearts about him. It could be that Jesus is speaking to your heart and mind this morning. Music speaks to all of us. And the power of music and the scriptures come together. It can penetrate our hearts and our minds. And just as Jesus stood before Peter and asked him, Who do you say that I am? Jesus is asking you the same question today. A question that every one of us, all, everyone must answer. Who do you believe is the Son of God? Do you believe it's Christ? Will you receive the greatest gift of mankind? The gift of His Son? It was once said that all roads lead to Rome. Well, not all roads lead to God and not all roads lead to heaven. There's only one road. There's only one way to God and to eternal life. And that road leads through Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And it's through his atoning work on the cross that we're drawn to God. Let me briefly take you down that road, step by step, so clearly presented by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament book of Romans. First step. First step is to believe that you're a sinner, that no one is perfect. That shouldn't be hard. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. Last time I checked, all means all, and that's all that all means. No one's left out here. You realize that? Second step is understand that there's a price to be paid for sin. It's a truth. Every time some someone sins, someone must die. Romans six twenty three says the the wages of sin is is death. Romans chapter five and verse twelve says, Wherefore by one man, Adam, sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death is passed upon all men. For what? All have sinned. First of this week, dear friend, taken, 61 years old. Tomorrow, next week, another memorial service. It's our lot. Jesus entered our world, and he was born to die because that, that's the price that must be paid. And it became flesh to taste death. For every man, someone must pay. Step three. Third step is to believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, came to die for our sins. There's a wonderful word, verse in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. It says, but God commends his love toward us <laughs> in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't say you got to clean yourself up. No, he just as you are. While we were yet in our sin, Christ paid the price. Sin's wages must be paid. And Jesus paid our sin debt. The fourth step is to understand that salvation is a free gift. Let me complete that wonderful verse in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Yes, yes, the wages of sin is death. But here's the good news. The gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, Christianity, you know, it's so exclusive. I mean, you Christians believe that salvation is only to be found in Jesus Christ. Yes, that's true. And we didn't make that up. That's God's eternal purpose. It's very clear in the Scriptures. However, Christ died for everyone. He is the bread of life. He is available to all. Yes, only one way. But everyone who will believe can be included. But you must receive it. It's a free gift. The fifth step is to receive that gift by faith. You see, God the Holy Spirit can and will open your mind and your heart to the reality of your sin. I know He did me. I... I was a pastor's son. I was raised in this church. And I remember arguing with God about what a good, what a good boy I was, you know. And I, he would come to me, the Holy Spirit, and point at my sin. And I would say, but, you know, I've never done this, and I've never done that, and I've never done this. And you know what I was doing? I was building a case for my own righteousness my own good deeds but praise God on a Sunday night at the age of 13 God's Holy Spirit visited my heart and I saw my sin and I knew I knew that I would spend eternity of judgment and torment because I was no better than the common lot of men. But, 
the Holy Spirit not only pointed to my sin, praise God, he pointed to the sin bearer. He pointed to the only one who could help me with my sin debt. And as you are convinced of the Holy Spirit, of your sin, and the light is shown on Christ, the Savior, who came to die in your place, then you are left to, by faith, receive the gift. Have you? Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Oh, what a great passage. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then I love verse 13, and I would not leave it out. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love that, whosoever. That's you, soever. That's me, soever. I love verse 9 because it's, it ends with, Thou shalt be saved. I love this verse 13 because it's so certain you shall be saved. And so here's the promise. Here's the promise. And when we claim the promise of salvation, we are saved, secured by God, as it says in Ephesians chapter 1, and at the same time sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. And so right now, your heart can say, yes. Yes, I believe. I believe that God loved me so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to pay sin's wages, dying for my sins, taking my place so that I could be forgiven and have everlasting life. And right now, we're going to pause just a moment. I would ask you to stand quietly right where you are. Quietly stand, bow your head, and as the instruments play, if you're here... And the Holy Spirit has illuminated your mind and heart to the reality of your need. You see, you, you can't be saved until you see your need. Saved from what? Saved from sin. Saved from condemnation. The Bible says that when we accept Christ, there is no condemnation to those who believe. Because we're placed in Christ. It's not our righteousness. I read this week, he said, but that, you know, it's not that when you trusted that the righteousness of Jesus was put to your account. It's really that you were set in Christ, the righteous one. <laughs> and we're in Him. That's a wonderful thing. Adopted, yes. You see, God chose. God chose to redeem us. He made the first move. So what about you? As we pause, would you come? Even where you stand right there this morning, you can just have a heart cry to God and say, yes. On this Easter morning, this resurrection morning, I choose the one who chose me. I choose the one. I accept the free gift. And that would make all of heaven rejoice today. So what about it? Step out of your pride. yourself before the God who loved you so much he gave his son this 
Savior who loved you so much, He laid down His life willingly. Holy Spirit loves you so much, He's He's drawing you to Himself right now, right now. Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But frankly, when Christ came into my heart, I could not keep it quiet. <laughs> it was just like that early Easter morning when they found the tomb empty. And he's alive. And that is the mark of a believer you have something to share and you want to share it absolutely and I trust if you have received Christ this morning you'll do just that the Bible says that those who believe were baptized Christ himself was baptized it's a picture of the gospel that saves if you're a believer here today may God do a new work a new work in your heart May he remind you of these wonderful, wonderful truths. Not just once a year, but every day as he's living in our hearts. God bless you. You may be seated. But the good news today is that the sacrifice has been made to redeem us. Jesus has risen. Death no longer has power to hurt those who trust in Him. Our Savior has gone ahead to prepare a place for us to be with Him always. While we remain here, He has sent His Spirit to empower us to live for Him. He's promised to come back for us. And one day, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And we'll join those who cry out, cry out, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, honor, glory, and praise.
Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. God bless you. Let's stand together. Thank you for coming. I want to share our appreciation for Pastor Petty John, our Minister of Music and Youth. He did a great job. And the choir and the instruments. And most of all, thank you for being with us today. I trust this will be a wonderful Easter afternoon time, a lot of time with our families. Our church, we, we will not be meeting tonight. We've had our special services this week. Trust you'll be safe and have a wonderful time with your family. Ask Brother Petty John and his wife to be dismissed, and we will greet you as you uh, make your exit. If you do not have a church home, a place to park it every Sunday. By the way, every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ every Sunday, and we invite you back here at Rogers Baptist Church to worship with us if you do not have a, a church home. And by the way, you really should, you know, you really should have a church home, and I pray that, that God would lead you to that place. Thank you for being with us. We're going to be dismissed by prayer at this time, and uh, Brother uh, Chris, Brother Chris, would you close our service in prayer?